ni politico This man na dey off in mind Aha na him una don hear o all this bad bad politician then we call themselves politician when they thief our money we no want to make the common man get what he supposed get Hello there. For some reason, uh, Facebook is not going to let me uh, go live or combined. So if you are watching me on uh, Facebook right now, you will need to go onto the YouTube and join the broadcast. It's an interesting one. Just search for Mayegun's Diary Political on YouTube and join us. For some reason, they won't let me come live directly as usual. Mm? Uh, sorry about that. I don't know what happened, right? Uh, you know, just when we we're about to go live, uh, Facebook just said, no, you can't. So we're going to stick to YouTube tonight. So good evening to you. Good morning to you. Good afternoon to you from wherever you're watching from. And yes, this is Mayegum live. <laughs> I need I I am Facebook. I Share the broadcast. Invite your friends. Invite your not so friendly friends and tell them that my good today. Yes. Thank you very much for joining me. Yes, good evening to you, good morning to you, good afternoon uh, to you from wherever you are watching from. This is Mayegun live. And if you have uh, taken your time to read the caption or the description of this uh, broadcast, you probably would know where and when you would be, uh, you know, joining and then uh, contributing as well. There is a bombshell. It probably not, it's not so new, but the difference here is that uh, it is the first time we have a comprehensive details of for all you have been inquisitive about or inquisitive about all the time or for a long time. We are talking about Tifnumbu. Well, before we get to that, the reaction to the Muslim Muslim ticket, which has now been uh, considered as uh, a form of a desperation on the part of uh, Kolu himself, in the des on his desperation to become the president of Nigeria, whatever it's going to cost. Well, his own friends, the people who actually said. They trusted his judgment, his leadership, this is that, his love for the United Nigeria, blah, 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 blah. But I remember reminding you then that uh, how could uh, somebody who was uh, sacked as a thief in the government of uh, corruption fighter, Bokuari, how could that person then suddenly become the champion of uh, 
a supposed newly dreamt Nigeria that uh, Tif I mean, Tifnumbu is going to come and uh, make happen. Baba Shola, a thief. But they said, Baba, calm down. You know me. And he said, well, it is all coming down to what we have said before. Now, you have uh, a former drug lord, right? A former drug lord, a chronic kleptomaniac, who is now going to be paid by a Boko Haram apologist, a Boko Haram backer, and a Boko Haram fighter's uh, protector, Shetima, on the one hand. So, then you now have to accept the fact that uh, if you didn't believe in their bogus Islamization or fulanization or any other nization agenda they are bringing, which none is in the interest of any of us, none of us, any of these ideas. Well, if you don't believe that, somebody is now saying, listen, something is wrong. Something is wrong. You know, Tifnumbu's intention is satanic. It is uh, a grave mistake, error. That according to him, he is now begging Bokwari to please do something. No, stop this. So, whatever the agenda is, all of us don't enter our more. Now, everybody go collect. But that's Baba Shola, wow. Two months ago, or should I say three months ago, it was Baba Shola, wow, and his crew that led the team who purchased the form, uh, the presidential form of 100 million naira for Kalu to be the APC, a Bekebese, you know, aspirant and then a candidate, eventual candidate, which, well, we'll come back to that. Just a throwback, a little one. I suppose it is zero zero one. Yeah, that was the beginning. The journey to what uh, probably they didn't know the destination. Or oh, now that they found out about the destination, they can no longer hide it. That's Baba Shilawa. Now let's uh, see where he was uh, talking about the, you know, the potential, the capacity and ability of uh, Tifnumbu to unite the country and be sensitive too. Sorry if the audio is a bit off, but you can still manage that. Yeah. Ah.
I was when the going was uh, fine. Then something happened. Jagaban decided to go and choose a Boko Haram sympathizer because he needed, according to the he needs the vote of the people of Northeast who have been under the incessant attack of a Boko Haram terrorist, Fulani uh, armed terrorist, and on and on. But somebody who could still secure votes even from a refugee camps, that person would be the man who once housed Kabiru Shokoto. That sent a very, very strong and dangerous signal, especially to the Christians uh, in northern Nigeria. Under Bokwari, Bokwari has been completely silenced as they have been slaughtered. Religious uh, war going on in northern Nigeria. Christians have been the, the bearer of the bronze, mostly. Communities ransacked. But because of excuse me, because of politics, many, many of them who are the, who are in the leadership positions, they have kept kind of mute. But somehow, somehow, they could sense the insensitivity of a Bokwari because of those behind the criminality, the terrorism. Now they are building a bit of uh, another, you know, uh, trust, hope inside Kolu, the demented the Kolu. Now he broke their hearts and they couldn't keep it. He still calls him his friend. Baba Shilawa. There is a part, uh, there is a note he released. I'm going to read that. Let's see if I can share my screen just for the uh, optical sake. And you can read along if you don't mind. Just uh, have it on. So he titled it, You've Committed Disastrous Error. Right? He said, I thought I would be able to avoid commenting on the disastrous error by my very good friend, Senator Bola Tinumbu, in his choice of a running mate. Right? Now, details of the body of what uh, he explained, the consequences of what Ifnumbu did to them, something that uh, people have suffered under Bokwari for seven years and is going to get on to eight years. And um, Ifnumbu said he's going to continue from wherever Bokwari stops. Now, this is somebody who paid or who Ifnumbu gave money to to go and buy the form presidential form in the name of a uh, northern uh, you know look at this the north bought the form presidential form for the for a southwest man so that he can be president of a uh, entire nigeria you know that kind of a thing oh they bought the form for him but anyway let's read this on record i will be i mean i will be the last person to stand in the way of my very good friend Tinumbu's path to the presidency. This is because since 2011, my consuming passion has been for him to succeed Buhari as president of Nigeria. <laughs> it will not be true, it will not be true if I say that I did not see it coming. I have often read his body language, picked up snippets from several discussions with his lap dogs some of whom sadly are Christians, but most of whom are Muslims. And I have conveyed my reservation to them against the pitfalls of a Muslim Muslim ticket towards which I sensed they were drifting. As part of my obligation to him, a close friend, I had on many, I mean, I had on many occasions argued the merits and the merits of uh, 
of ticket permutations to him. I have done so in both verbal and written form, and I have likewise done so with some of his close, respectable associates and friends. In all instances, I had left him with the sole responsibility of his final decision, arguing that in the end, the consequences of the outcome of any bad decision will be his to bear. There might be some collateral damages though. I have also on several occasions passed on to him counsels and messages from some well-meaning Nigerians intended to alert him on the possible outcomes of the presidential ticket permutations. Sinumbu is a very good man. He is a great listener. He has a very humble and friendly disposition to everyone. He is very generous in both cash and kind, especially where it could advance his political interests. But I have realized that it is in the nature of power that psychophants and lapdogs have the most influence on leaders with such character traits. They will lie to him, malign and disparage others and generally do anything to curry his favor and to also put well-meaning associates in bad light. I suspect this is what has happened to my friend. He has been cornered by self-serving, hero-worshipping lapdogs. It's never used to be like this. Why, while in his eight days in Lagos, he surrounded himself with smart, streetwise guys that could tell truth to power. He had Raf, <laughs> Raul Faregbeshola, Yomi, well, Yemi Oshibaju, Babatunde Fashola, Dili Alake, Muiz Banire, etc., etc. The Lagos days were the days of think tanks, strategic planning, Luriro, monitoring and evaluation, principles and ideologies, Luriro, all my lies. Oh, I'm going to expose that at some point anyway. This is Babashi Ulawa talking about Tifnumbu. But these people have since grown up and moved up to establish their own systems, leaving my friend stranded. Nature's they say, Abba's vacuum. Welcome the Abuja equivalent. But the Abuja equivalent are people inflicted with modern Nigerian diseases, religious bigotry, psychophancy, and morbid tribalism. They are mostly political jobbers who are most times not averse to the application of diabolical means. Gone are the days of think tanks and strategic planning. Gone are the days of principle and ideologies. Try and call a meeting, they will not attend. Try and make a plan, they will sabotage. They will sabotage it. Everything is ad hoc. Everything is chaotic because they excel in such environments. The result is that they have played on his long-term ambition to be president and have built it into a sort of desperation and a crescendo that easily justifies this satanic resort to a Muslim Muslim ticket. This is the calamity that has befallen my friend. And why Kashim Shetima is an overambitious man who has a Machiavellian bent and has lost, I mean, and has lots of money with which to procure a preferred candidate status among Tifnumbu's lab dogs. And as we are beginning to see, to also procure bogus supporters, especially from among the Christian community to help launder is not so good image. He's talking about Shetima. But as a popular proverb goes, those whom the gods want to destroy, they first make mad. It appears that the gods want to destroy the APC and its presidential candidate and has chosen the instrumentality of the northern Muslim governors and their super ambitious tool and Kashim Ibrahim Shetima for this purpose. Alaji Kashim Shetima is a Greek gift from the northern governors to Tinumbu. I advise Bola to make sure Kashim's two hands are always in his plain sight and empty. True, based on the advice of his new friends, Bola Ahmed Tinumbu has made his choice and I am sure he thinks he is ready for the outcome of that choice. He has chosen to bring religion to the front burner of Nigerian politics. And being a Muslim, he has chosen to take sides with his own religion. For all cares, Christians can go to blazes with their votes. But it must also be told that there will be consequences for this choice. Some of them are that Christians all over the country will revolt against the APC to put the chances of his election in serious jeopardy. It will also put the election of all Christians 
standing for elections in Christian-dominated areas in jeopardy. This could result in APC being a minority party in both the National and State, uh, state House of Assembly. Now tell me, which Christian will vote for APC with the following contraption, with the following contraption? Muslim presidential candidate, Lagos. Muslim president, uh, vice presidential candidate, Borono. Muslim national chairman, Nasarawa. Muslim deputy national chairman, Borono. Muslim president, Kasina. Muslim senate president, Yobe. Muslim speaker, Lagos. Muslim deputy speaker, Plateau, etc., etc. APC the great. Una de, una, una de try wo. That's Baba Shiro Lawalo. Continuing. A northern governor, I mean, sorry, the northern governors and some northern Muslims elites, Muslim elites, must have persuaded them that they will never vote for a ticket that has a northern Christian on it. And he has agreed with them. But if he thinks a Muslim Muslim ticket will win him the northern Muslim vote, he should have a rethink. They will massively vote for one of their sons because it is in their nature to do so. Buhari, their first son, will not be on the ballot in 2023. Atiku, their second son, will be, that's Babashi Lawalo, talking you know. Proof of a possible Islamic agenda was leaked. Listen to this, oh. This is Babashi Lawalo, former secretary to the government of Nigeria. Babashi Lawal, the grass cutter. This part. Proof of a possible Islamic agenda was leaked when Governor Ganduje, the Kamul Islam, gave advance notice that Tinumbu had assured them he would be nominating a Muslim as his running mate. For those who might not know, Governor Ganduje has a foundation called Ganduje Foundation, which purpose, according to his website, is to provide selfless service, hang on, selfless service to humanity and Islam. But whose primary purpose, it appears, is the conversion of Christians to Islam. This is a message from the former secretary to the government of Nigeria under Buhari, Babashir Lawal, the same man that paid for Tifnumbu's 100 million era APC form. Just, I'm going to repeat that line again. Oh, very, very important. It's going to be a long night, by the way, a long reading night. Proof of a possible Islamic agenda was leaked when Governor Ganduje, the Kad Kadmul Islam, gave advance notice that Tinumbu had assured them he would be nominating a Muslim as his running mate. For those who might not know, Governor Ganduje has a foundation called Ganduje Foundation, which purpose, according to its website, is to provide selfless service to humanity and Islam, but whose primary purpose, it appears, is, to, is the conversion of Christians to Islam. Now, let's go on. So, if my very good friend Tinumbu is a desperate, I mean, in a desperate bid to become president, allows himself to make, allow himself to make into a religious bigot or even a mujahideen, he is welcome. But it is a risk that will not play out positively for his presidential bid. But were he to win and become president of Nigeria, it will be as a sectional president, an Islamic president, and it will surely face massive discontent and opposition even before taking off. Expecting Nigerians to ignore this crass insensitivity to the country's diversity amounts to acceding to the perpetration of very grave injustice and discrimination against a huge segment of the society. No one who seeks to be president of Nigeria should ever deploy the tool of religious extremism and ex ex I mean, exclusivism. Hang on. Exclusivism, yes. As a tool to win elections. This is very, very dangerous. And this is very, very sad. But barring any last minute change of mind, Bola has made his choice. He should be bluntly told that in this choice, Nigerian Christians clearly see a pending Islamic Republic of Nigeria. A Yoruba man. They won't use Yoruba man. 
eh, to fulfill the agenda of Islamizing Nigeria. Abi, I mean, they said they are coming to build the economy. Shetima is coming to ah, tinyitita. Emagbo, listen, oh, how then do you hang on? Yes, he said, Republic of Nigeria in its infancy. I'll, I'll take that again. But barring any last minute change of mind, Bola has made his choice. He should be bluntly told that in this choice, Nigerian Christians clearly see a pending Islamic Republic of Nigeria in its infancy and are right to be severely anxious. There is gloom among the Christian community all over the country since Tinumbu announced Kash Kashim Shetima as his running mate. Are the generality of the Muslim Umar happy with this? The answer is a resounding no. In fairness, so, there are many, many reasonable, responsible Muslims who have also rejected this. In fairness, how then do we respond? The decision as to how to respond to this deliberately senseless act of provocation is both corporate to each religious group and also personal to each voter that love peace and hate injustice. Christians want to continue to live, to live peacefully with their Muslim neighbors at home, at school, at the workplace, in the market, and on the street, as we have always done or desire to do. And I am sure Muslims share this view too. No one person's ambition to rule over us should be allowed to set us apart and at war with one another. Bola Ahmed Tinumbu should be compelled upon by whoever can do so to resign his, I mean, this decision. President uh, Muhammadu or Mumumadu Bokowari should exercise his power as the commander-in-chief and as the APC leader to revoke this nomination of a VP by Tifnumbu. The APC national chairman should refuse to sign the nominations form if not resigned it. There is a story in the Bible on how some people responded to similar provocation. Uh, in quote, and when all Israel saw that the king did not listen to them, the people answered the king, what portion do we have in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your, I mean, to your tents, O Israel. Look now to your own house, David. So Israel went to their tents. First Kings chapter 12, verse 16. I will love for Bola to be our next president. God forbid. But I am afraid a Muslim Muslim ticket will be dead on arrival. And the arrival date, according to INEX election timetable, is 25th of January 2023. This ticket will drag down the whole APC member to the pit. We all should reject it. This is uh, Babashir Lawa. But that's not the point. The, uh, the Tifnumbu and gang, they have made up their mind. Good for them. Uh, for those who are preparing, thinking there was, I mean, there's going to be an election, you are deceiving yourselves. These guys are not interested in elections. Let me tell you, as we speak right now, they are already bragging that they already have a 22 states or 22 governors. For having 22 governors, they are just waiting for the coronation of Tifnumbu. And who are those who make up the 22 governors? Most of them are from this uh, Sharia governors from Northern Nigeria. Unfortunately, they saw the idea of a Muslim Muslim to him with the pledge that uh, except he did that, they are never going to, to make him their president. But a lot happened in that speech. So Tifnumbu himself knows that uh, uh, he know they look well, but he they play, he they show. He was in, uh, he was in uh, Oshun earlier, I think it was uh, yesterday, I believe. And he had a worry. That worry is that uh, make people no go join labor or make people no go labor in vain or, or else they will labor to death. Then you and I will go to Lagos. Do you know Tifnumbu? Do you want to know him? Do you actually want a comprehensive, detailed, everything you need to know about this person that has been kept away for so long and then uh, today 
the Indomie generation and the uh, you know uh, and the self uh, destroyed older generation who have been us licking some of these rogues in time past. Uh, you know, changing the story, trying to make a rogue, a thief, a former drug lord, eh, your hero. We must not let our children eh, feed from that eh, trash story that so many of these, uh, uh, what do you call it, these uh, baby, baby, baby adults, some of, some of them are in their 50s, 60s, 40s, but they have uh, all these similar baby brains and they are passing that on, on fraud, on lies about this uh, fraudulent figure. I'm a Yoruba man. I am not proud of a thief. A criminal with a questionable past can never be my own. Uh, he can never be my own leader, can he? I'm coming back to that. He was telling people of Oshun today, the same people that Aregbe Mubu destroyed their own uh, economy, destroyed their spending power, destroyed them, uh, you know, so much that today, if anybody paid them full salary, you are a hero. He was there today, saying me there's no labor in uh, labor. <laughs> I want to be a one I want labor. Labor and also cool. Alone, in the guy in the only labor. Alone, in the labor. Here is my battle. I say, Here is a little more. I say, Here is a little more. I say, I Well, by choice. I'm going to go into another long reading, which is uh, getting to know who is Bola Tifnumbu. Let me tell you something, okay? What we do, whatever we do, or any of everything I do here, I'm doing it for posterity's sake. I am not the type that is going to come back and look back and say, oh, I regretted that. Uh, you know what I mean? Just like many, many of you will continue to rebuild or you can do your own uh, oh, in these people. Okay? Uh, our own, uh, our people deserve to know the truth. Not just that. They must never be blackmailed into any form of uh, Tifnumbu's selfish ambition which they have been struggling to attach to Yoruba by all means. Don't let, uh, you know, the family of uh, thieves, don't let uh, criminals who have a chance to still be protected till now, don't let them be the hero to your children. Tayeti, I want, you see, some of these people will defend them. Some, you'll feel sorry for them. Others, they do it because of what they are going to really get from it or what they are looking to get. It's not really about uh, the people, so to say. But let's take a walk. David Uden, a Yoruba son, a Yoruba Omoluwa Biatata, has done a great job. And, you know, and, and, I mean, it's a, an historical masterpiece a great detailed research job on his platform and it is called uh west africa uh, weekly hang on i'm gonna bring that up yeah this is a long read and it's about the background picture of uh how Tifnumbu and the rest of them including atifku including some of you well how they, 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 they looted your future. But before they came to loot your future, where they started from. And to this day, even though eh, some of you who are watching me from Lagos, listen to this one. You are going to be angry. You are going to be mad. You are going to be defending them. You are going to be seeing people who are their enemies or not their enemies, whatever you think. From that, your face me, I slap you over a room. No electricity, no security, no water. No, you know. From there, you are going to be defending people who have mortgaged your entire future, including the children you are likely going to have as well, if you don't wake up. Their children are buying houses in America. 
buying things everywhere. These are children who have no real job. But you, Kabiru, Kabiru from uh, Mushi, Kabiru, you are going to be angry that somebody is trying to destroy your Tifnumbu when they have already destroyed your life. I pray you wake up or I pray you don't, whichever one, eh? Now you go choose. I'm going to share my screen again. Go on to West Africa Weekly, right? I'm going to share the link for those who might want to take their time to read this. But for the diary, we want to have it verbally. And at the same time, eh? have our own review on it as well. It is sad. Ah, I know to delay you. Eh? David Uday did this. David, you did this. Wherever you are, may God just continue to help me bless you. Eh? Your material are so educational, not just for the generation who have been lied to, including the generation that has been lying to others, all because they want to, you know, make a criminal the hero. The hero that doesn't really give a damn about those who wants to worship or who are worshiping him. So it's up to us. Choose your poison. I have decided never eh, to play into the hands of those who are waiting. What? To feast on me, feast on my life, feast on my future, feast on everything that uh, makes, me, makes me human. And then they flaunt it as they would want to, unchallenged. David, now, like I said, I have shared the link in the comments for those who might want to take their time later to read this. And let me tell you something. Do you know one thing you can do as well if you really want to give support? Hmm? When you take your time and you read all of that, doesn't mean it's, 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 it's just to help open your mind to what you are getting into if you're one of those jumping up and down for them today, okay? And for the children who have been lied to, for them to also know the, the, that uh, those they call your heroes are a bunch of criminals. That is why you are born into a place that is, nothing works. It is deliberate. But there's a genesis. Tiflumbu is the only person. Well, I don't know how many people are like that. It's the only person I know who has no childhood friends. You get what I mean? Like, when you, the first 20 years of his life is completely wiped out, erased. And there's a reason for that. Now, let's take a read. For those uh, who are like, am I going to beg, I beg, eh? fire me with the read them. Or for those who have already read this already, I just want to, you just want to hear me like uh, read it out and had my own jara. This is the title, Bola Ahmed, from drug lord to presidential candidates. In 1990s, I'm sorry, the 1990s were a crazy time. Somebody wrote that, which uh, was uh, John Kelly, White House Chief of Staff, 2017 to 2019. Now, let's start. On October 11, 1990, federal agents from the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA, knocked on the front door of 460 Taft Place in the city of Gary, Indiana. Once a booming steel town with a population approaching 180,000 I mean, 180, in 1960, Gary was one of a number of cities and towns across the U.S. suffering from severe population loss. Among other adverse effects of overseas competition on their mainstay industries. From having over 30,000 employees at its peak in 1970, the city's main employer, U.S. Steel Gary Works, retained just 6,000 employees in 1990. In these instances, this city and its 77% African-American population were witnessing explosive growth in one of the few industries guaranteed to boom in response to such difficult circumstances. 42-year-old Lee Andrew Edwards was one of the entrepreneurs who had found a place in the heroin trade. 
and by all accounts, he had done well for himself. With the proceeds from his illegal business, he had bought two residential homes, including 460 Taft Place, an apartment building, a liquor store, and a new car, all paid for with cash. Now, this is it. Head of Gary Drug Ring gets to it's just uh, a newspaper uh, at the time, a newspaper uh, report that verified that happened, right? But let's continue. How did they get jail? According to court records from the United States Court of Appeals, Seventh Circuit, the DEA agents arrived at the property to execute a search warrant after a seven month FBI investigation involving. Edward's brother, Jimmy, he implicated him as the narcotics kingpin of Gary. Edwards did not open the door for the agents who were forced to break into the house. He instead fired three gunshots at them, after which he surrendered. DEA agents found weapons including a cabin rifle, thousands of dollars in cash, drug prepping equipment, including a triple beam scale and several grams of cocaine and heroin powder in the house. He was later sentenced to life in prison, but not before something about his business operation came to the fore. Two drug dealers and an accountant, a partnership begins. Federal investigators had determined that Edward's heroin supply came from, from a Nigerian drug dealer in Chicago called Abiodun Agbele. Abiodun had earlier agreed to work for the feds in exchange for lighter sentencing. And as part of the plea deal, he revealed everything he knew about the heroin trade in Chicago. Located at the junction of four states with combined population exceeding 27 million at the time, Chicago was a key trafficking hub in the American heroin trade. And as, a, as it turned out, the wholesale trade of an especially potent form of heroin from Southeast Asia in 1990s Chicago was controlled by Nigerian criminal gangs. The following excerpt is taken from the January 2011 Illinois Drug Threat Assessment published by the U.S. Justice Department. Now, the part, so, uh, the U.S. Justice Department's National Drug Intelligence Center. In quote, Nigerian criminal groups are responsible for wholesale distribution of most of the SEA heroin shipped into Chicago. SEA heroin, which is 80-90% pure, is being sold between Nigerian traffickers for $80,000, between $80,000 and I mean, $10,000 per kilogram. Wholesalers in Chicago usually sell heroin without cutting it to minimize their handling of the products and their exposure to law enforcement. There's a cut out there from that report, cycled out as well, but let's continue. Agbele himself was so criminal minded, I mean, master, I'm sorry, Agbele himself was no criminal mastermind, however, as he testified under oath that honor belongs to a man who went by the name of Adegboyega Muiz. Akonde, who was apparently his uncle. Shortly after Agbele's arrival in the U.S., Akonde had taken him under his wing and showed him the ropes of wholesale heroin trafficking. When Akonde returned to Nigeria in mid-1990, Agbele was left in charge of selling regular heroin shipments from Nigeria to Lee, Ed, I mean Lee Edwards and delivering the profits to his uncle. In the meantime, the Nigerian-led heroin trade, Chicago Fed, an addiction epidemic, right? They said that in the meantime, the Nigerian-led heroin trade in Chicago fed an addiction epidemic that became so bad that it changed local health and law enforcement practices. For the first time, providing addicts with free access to safe syringes and needles to ensure that they did not share them and possibly spread HIV became a core focus of public health policy. In other words, CEA heroin, I mean, SEA heroin from Nigeria was so potent and addictive that 
public health policy in Chicago shifted away from trying to make heroin addicts stop, stop using altogether, and merely ensuring that they used safely. They couldn't stop them because it became so addictive. One notable organization that did such outreach work with heroin addicts was the Chicago Recovery Alliance, CRA. Well, David said he reached out to its current uh, executive director, John uh, Wenning, to get a sense, I mean, to get a sense of how the heroin epidemic changed law enforcement practices from the 1990s to date in Chicago. The, his comments were predictably grim. So in quote, what uh, John Wenning told David, in quote, unquote, yeah, heroin, of course, has consequences, right? But I think we would probably say that the more major impact is the draconian laws around how heroin was policed. I think that it's pretty well established that there were, I mean, there was a very specific targeting of folks who use drugs generally, but also heroin in particular, and it was mostly targeted towards the policing of black and brown communities. That's not specific to Chicago. I think that's across the nation. But just in general, I think, in bracket, there was a, all, there was a well, lack of a compassion by government entities to give people access to the treatment that they need or non-violent drug possession and the mandatory minimum sentencing. I mean, there is a ton of different aspects of this that uh, absolutely eviscerated population particularly marginalized populations in Chicago. And that's probably the advocate's view on this. Now, whether or not that that can be translated into a comment about the international drug trade, and specifically from you said, Nigeria, I just don't know, but that's definitely more like a domestic politics than international. When is? And there's a part where he actually said that. that. But let's continue again, of course. So while all of this was going on, an interesting sub, I mean, subplot was taking place in the background. An accountant living in the Chicago area who worked for Mobile Oil, Nigeria, with a declared monthly income of $2,400, had just deposited over $1.4 million in the bank. He had no known source of income apart from his day job, but he had become friends with Akonde and Agbele, Discovering one key piece of information in the process, drug dealers need accountants too. Hmm. Soon, he would find himself holding and wiring money on behalf of a Nigerian heroin gang in Chicago. Fast forward a bit to January 1992, and he would find himself the subject of a U.S. federal investigation. Bobo Chicago. Can you see him? Bobo Chicago. That's him there, right? Now, let's continue. This is his journey into... Eh? Well, let's continue. Now, fast forward a bit further in the same year, and he would successfully run for office in Nigeria as a senator for Lagos West. Then, another politician said to have... I mean, another politician said to have uh, ties to international drug trafficking who successfully run for president in Nigeria on a controversial all-Muslim ticket in 1993. You don't hear him? MKU, Abiola Sev, get linked to drug trafficking. Mokuna, relax. Relax, eh? Sip your tea, I mean, sip your tea or sip your, you know, your brandy. Whatever you are drinking, do that now, a minute. David, Mundei. David, don't then you be like person where they where, where they dig grave. Can they see extra extra sources where they link to others? Or more, they go beg them to cover the grave oh, for the sake of your children. Eh? They must know this. They must hear this. It's important. And then you understand why Yorubas, Yorubas who understand very well. Uh -huh. See. Hey, it's Lloyd. You see now, Igbo, you the smoke. At this point, if you, if you just break out small, like, uh -huh, you puff, puff, pass. As they talk, uh, puff, puff, pass. Because it's about to get so interesting. And I don't want to make you the whole line like that until you go, uh, no choke. Yes, MKO, Abiola. 
Atifko Abubaka. Eropon le drug trafficking. 1990 was mad. Bobo Chicago saw the future. He quickly went on to invest in politics. If they hold me, I go see that my enemy, they pursue me because I got involved in politics. And it worked for him so far. Of course, we have not even started though. Now let's see the journey for that. Fast forward though to 1993, MK Abiola, drug lord himself as well, drug trafficker in this story, was also, he also attempted to be president, all Muslim, Muslim, Muslim tickets. 1993, eh? I'm coming. The election will be annulled. The politician jailed. And ultimately, another Nigerian military coup will take place in 1994. The accountant will find himself exiled and working with the National Democratic Coalition, NADECO, to unseat a kleptocrat, a kleptocrat military dictator. Then the dictator would unexpectedly drop dead one day in 1998, followed in quick succession by the jailed politician with the alleged drug links. Okay, it's becoming interesting, right? Let's continue. See, I'm begging you, please, eh? If you love David's work, this is what I do every time I use his work, okay? Like, I read them out like this. I encourage my friends to please. The link is there. I have already, if you're watching me on YouTube, the link to this uh, story eh, is right there, pinned at the top, okay? Copy it. Go on there. I mean, subscribe. I think, uh, I don't think it's up to $20 a month. You can subscribe. Be in his newsletter because when you they talk about freelance journalists, eh? Now that guy, trust me, they don't like him. Let's continue. The accountant will return is a hero and successfully run for governor of Lagos in 1999. The, klepto, uh, the kleptocrat dictator's bad man who helped Londa over $4 billion will become the accountant's new bestie. As, a, as an East-White Chicago drug gang's leader, will start his new lifetime mission of capturing Africa's largest subnational economy and turning it into his personal aza. Lagos State became Tifnumbu's personal aza. Send me your aza. If you see this Gen Z, this new generation, I mean, this uh, Indomie generation, if you ask them what is aza, aza. That is a Lagos State account become his personal aza. A major political opponent of the accountant will end up and strangled, I mean, will end up strangled to death in his bedroom 10 months to an election which is chosen. Candidate would go on to win. Said opponent's son will suppose said, I mean, subsequently be offered a cushy job working for that candidate. He would accept the offer. If you are already struggling to follow this, if you are already struggling to follow this unlikely sequence of events, don't worry. It gets worse. David, David. Eh? Now, the 1990s were a crazy time. Now, let's go back to the full thing. I want to ask you, my friends, if this is your first time of watching my ego, you can take a moment and just uh, like uh, the video, okay? Like the broadcast to show that you are here, right? Then share the broadcast as well, okay? Uh, yeah, let's see. We are currently over 2,000 on YouTube because they didn't allow us to go live on Facebook, which is all right. But it's just uh, the loss of my friends on Facebook, unfortunately. But if you are here, right? Take a minute and do that before I get fully into this part, right? And I'm going to be back just uh, in a minute. Make I go make a fresh tea. While I do that, you too, take a moment hmm? and like the broadcast. Share it. And when I get back, we'll continue. Oh, <laughs> 